Hi, everybody. Hi, Joe. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Um, Double video. Double video. Yes. Yes. So we had a little bit of a time between videos. Mm -hmm. So this time we have a special video, mm -hmm. uh, which is featuring Playwright 126 and 127 updates. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of exciting stuff. Very exciting video. Uh, but so before we get into it, uh -huh. I have to ask you a question. Do you prefer the 126 features or the 127 features? 127 features. 127 features, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but here I will not label which ones are which. We will have just a, you know, a mashup of mm -hmm. features. So we have the agenda. So let's uh, jump uh, straight into the very first feature. Very exciting. New locators API. Okay. So Playwright is already very capable of selecting elements on screen, mm -hmm. on the page. Uh, we have selector engines, we have selectors, and uh, our users were actually asking us for good guidance on how to select and how to create locators. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have this guidance in the shape and form of these beautiful seven methods, a designated API on how you create locators. Ooh. So they'll so show up my we... autocomplete. I don't have to remember. I... Exactly. They yes. will show you autocomplete. If you have a typo somewhere, it will, you, you will see there's a typo. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's, it's, it's all very good. And also, if you use these methods exclusively, mm -hmm. then you will have a really reliable and good tests because mm -hmm. these are the good selectors and the, the good locators. Yeah. So the rule of thumb is actually to prefer the new get by APIs to select mm -hmm. elements. But, uh, of course, the old methods, like the page locator and the strings that you pass as an argument, doesn't go anywhere. You, you can still use the old methods, like the before. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you, you can change everything to the new locators, and they are actually more readable. Mm -hmm. can, you, um, can you go back a slide? I just want to see them again. Yeah. Um, okay, what do, we, what do we have? Yeah, we've so got... we have uh, get by role. Okay, we've got label. test ID. That's a good one. And, and text. Um, and role. Okay. The other ones yeah. I'm probably not going to use, but role, I like role, I like text, and I like test ID. You might like get by label because it gets input by the assigned label, which I is think. very nice. Oh. I thought the text, text doesn't exactly. do that. Text, the text does this. Yeah, yeah I'm going to use text. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, moving on. Mm -hmm. So, and this is actually the tip of the day for the today's video. Mm -hmm. And the tip of the day is to use this small uh, migration guide mm -hmm. uh, to learn how to use the new API methods and uh, mm -hmm. to try and use them in all the new tests you author. Mm -hmm. And maybe migrate some old ones as well. Ooh. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but does CodeGen use this? Uh, you are getting ahead of yourself a little bit. Oh, okay. Actually, yes, we are, oh. we, are consistent. <laughs> we are consistent with ourselves. I, I want a bonus point. <laughs> yeah, you get one. Uh, let me actually show you the demo. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have just, you know, a simple project and I will hit this record new button and I will create a new test here. And, uh, right now you see, I'm hovering over elements and mm -hmm. I see this small black box Ooh. under my cursor pointer. And now yeah. it shows me all the good stuff like get by role. These are links mm -hmm. and links can be easily selected by the get by role method mm -hmm. with the accessible name as an option. Mm -hmm. So this search one is actually a button with an accessible name search. And this is actually get by placeholder. Mm -hmm. And these all are links. So you can select this as links. So as we generate this test, we see we have navigation and then these beautiful new APIs. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. but actually, yeah, my, my browser is open behind me, mm -hmm. right? Because we have this show browser checkbox and I can, you know, pick selector. And yes. uh, play around, mm -hmm. see how stuff works. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, some of you, and maybe you, Joel, mm -hmm. might notice that these APIs are actually looking familiar. Mm -hmm. And there is a reason for that uh, because they are actually inspired by testing library. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a video message from the author of uh, testing library from McKenzie Dots mm -hmm. uh, about these new APIs. So okay. let's, uh, let's watch it. Okay. Hey everyone, my name is Kenzie Dodds and I'm excited to talk with you about Playwright Selectors. So Playwright, amazing tool for testing 
And uh, to be able to do testing, you need to be able to select elements on the page. And so Playwright for a very long time, maybe since the very beginning, I think, uh, we've had the ability to select things on the page using this selectors API, uh, where you use page.locator to uh, get things on, uh, on the screen via this string selector. And there are all kinds of things that you can select text, you can select um, via CSS, you can select, um, you know, some more CSS stuff. Uh, uh, and you can select via role, and there's even a experimental view and React selector, XPath selectors, good old days. Uh, so there are lots and lots of different ways to select things. And, and there's also even a role selector, uh, which is pretty rad. But there are just so many ways to select things um, in with Playwright that it's difficult to know which one of these tons and tons of different ways to select uh, you should be focusing on. And uh, the other problem is it's very difficult to get uh, type uh, completion for this, so discoverability of these different ways to select things is kind of difficult. Um, there's not really a good guide on which of these different selectors you should use, and if you make a typo, there's no uh, type uh, help there, so it's not going to tell you that you are selecting things wrong. So for example, if we're using one of these role selectors, and we misspell role, for example, there's nothing there to um, help us see that we've gotten something wrong. And so this is one problem that I presented to the Playwright team, uh, and I talked a little bit about my guiding principles for testing. Uh, the more your tests resemble the way your software is used, the more confidence they can give you, and uh, that's from Testing Library. I created Testing Library years ago to make it easier for developers to test their software. And um, it, Testing Library is focused on DOM and selecting things on the DOM, interacting with the DOM, and Playwright has a great way to interact with the DOM, but I thought that the selectors were a little bit lacking and, and could be improved. And, and so I asked them to investigate looking into how we do things with testing library in selectors. And in fact, there's actually already an implementation of testing library with Playwright uh, that is not listed here. So it's uh, Playwright, testing library uh, that you can find here. There's actually a couple different modules for this, uh, but already the testing library selectors are usable with uh, Playwright, uh, specifically the app Playwright testing library uh, slash test is probably the one that you would want to use until the release today, but um, or that we're talking about today. So uh, the ability to get uh, by, well, by test ID, don't recommend that one. And in fact, um, yeah, don't worry about that one. But uh, getting by label text and getting by role, uh, getting by text, all of these um, were added uh, capabilities to Playwright. And I so I started using these and recommended to the Playwright team to investigate adding these. Uh, we have a priority of these in testing library of which ones you should use. We can talk about that in a second. But I was really thrilled that the Playwright team listened to my feedback and uh, decided to add these. I think they even had conversations about doing this before I started talking with them. So we're very much aligned in the direction that we want things to go. So uh, as inspired by testing library, uh, writing locators is a joy <laughs> in a very good way. Um, so I guess I should have added the, my star a long time ago. You should add yours. Um, but uh, so now we have a by text, by role, by label, placeholder, all text and title. And so there, not all of the queries are added, but most of them are. And I don't think that we actually need any of the other ones just because the way that this works. So this is not using testing library under the hood. This is using their own uh, capabilities custom written for Playwright. And I think that they do a stellar job of this. My uh, number one recommendation is to use by role for sure. Uh, and that's the, the same with testing library. I recommend using the by role query first. This will... Uh, search through the accessibility tree. It allows you to specify an accessible name. Uh, this just helps a lot with the accessibility of your application to, to test this aspect of it. And it also reads way, way nicer. Um, so instead of just looking for something that, that has the text sign in, you're gonna be looking for an element that has a role of button sign in uh, with the name of sign in. And that role, you don't actually have to specify yourself. That uh, role, for a button. Uh, in fact, if we go to testing uh, playground.com, um, or actually it's testing playground.com, I think. There we go. 
I uh, don't know what that is. <laughs> so if you go to the testing playground um, and click around here, you'll notice that uh, the recommended query for this, for testing library, is uh, screen get by role button. Uh, here we have a password and our email and all of that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's going to give you your suggested query here, but you'll notice even though it's saying get by role text box and it's get by role button for this one, uh, here we go. Yeah, if I click the button, it's actually going to submit the form. <laughs> so that's, um, but it's going to say get by role button for this. And we don't have the role button here. Uh, we don't have the role text box uh, for our, uh, our inputs or anything. These are all uh, just implicit roles that you get. And you can actually inspect this if you open up the developer tools and go to uh, the accessibility tab here. Then you can see what uh, accessible roles we have. We have our, um, our label, our accessible name is going to be email address. As it says name, email address there, that's coming from the label. Um, the, the accessible name can actually come from a variety of places. And then the role is text box, even though we're not actually specifically specifying anything. Um, this actually also has a description, uh, which is part of the accessible, um, the accessibility um, options that you have. Uh, and then, yeah, if we click on just this, then we'll, or let's uh, select this in the selector here, then we'll see that this is just a generic, so there's, there's no role that just regular text gets, uh, and uh, it doesn't have a name either. So. For uh, stuff like this, yeah, you're still going to want to select by uh, text. So there's still some things that you'll want to select by text, but most things you'll want to uh, do a get by role. So uh, this is going to drastically improve the readability of your tests. Uh, it's just way easier to read this. Um, it's also going to improve the accessibility of your uh, UIs because using the role query is a lot easier uh, than it was uh, with what we had before. So I'm super, super stoked about this, and I hope you are too. Thanks so much, Playwright team, for being amazing and being on top of this stuff and uh, adapting this, because I think it's an important part of making fast and reliable end-to-end -end tests and uh, building fast and reliable applications. See ya. OK, uh, awesome message. Uh, thanks to Kent uh, for recording this for one mm -hmm. for us. Uh, okay, moving on. So this was the new API, and the next uh, step is the assertions update. Now, so with these releases, we have a, a little bit of new APIs. So here is the playwright assertion to mm -hmm. be enabled, which now accepts an option enabled false. Okay. So this is the same as not to be enabled or to be disabled. Okay. But this is friendlier for programs. If you want to have a function that accepts some flags, mm -hmm. now you can, you know, have a condition inside. Mm -hmm. And the same is actually for to be editable and to be visible. Mm -hmm. All of them are now very friendly for programmers, for programs, actually. Yes. And the other thing that we add is the max redirects uh, limit. For API mm -hmm. testing, before we had no limits, so you might have an infinite redirect loop. Now we limit these to 20, and you are actually able to configure them in your uh, request.get or request.fetch methods calls. Mm -hmm. If you have more than 20 redirects, I feel like you should fix something before you go increase yeah, oh, this yeah, number. For sure, yeah. OK, miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. So here we have a bunch of new things happening in Playwright test land. Oh, um, okay. I was my gonna favorite ask one. Test. Yeah, we have a new value that you can pass to workers flag. You can say 20%, and this is 20% of all the available CPUs on your machine. Okay, this is using like um, OS.CPUs to get the count? Yeah, yes, okay. yes, precisely. Yeah, which is very nice. You can specify 50, for example, and it will work nicely on your CI and locally as well. Mm, yeah, cool. Yeah, pretty nice. Uh, the next one is the new option, ignore snapshots. Mm -hmm. So this might be handy for visual regression testing people. Uh, sometimes you can have a mode when you're actually ignored the too much snapshot and to have screenshot uh, playwright assertions. Mm -hmm. and you might also have this a config option. And so the last one... Wait, wait, no, I, I want to go back to that one. So yeah. um, I, I, I can guess when people would use this. 
but but can you tell me when, when should I use this? Because it's, it's uh, a little strange to ignore my snapshots, right? So for example, you have a test that is actually functional, but that just takes a screenshot in the very end and compares mm -hmm. screenshots. So the functional part of the test makes sense on any platform and any browser. Mm -hmm. But for the screenshot tests to work, you usually want to run them only in a very pretty good and well-defined environment. For example, in a container or on a very specific, you know, Linux mm -hmm. machine. Okay. So, so, so for the local okay. ones, you so, can use ignore snapshots. And... Got it. So like I can, I can in a Docker container, I can run my full tests and have my snapshots and my screenshots and everything, and then um... without container, just in okay, okay. So, so Windows. This, this is ignoring image snapshots. Uh, say, say it again. The, the idea of this is to ignore image snapshots. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Precisely. Um, and then when I'm not running, when when I'm not running in a Docker container, but I still want to run it because I want it to be easy to debug or something, then I can pass this flag in, and I can debug the rest of my test. Yeah. Got it. Good. Uh, next, uh, the option to configure the bind location for HTML report server. So currently it defaults to localhost, and I think it's uh, 9223. But if you serve it from inside the Docker container, you can now specify on 0000 as a host location. And this way, it will serve from inside the Docker container to your host system. 9223 is a suspicious port number because that sometimes gets used as a dev tool I agree. port number. I agree. I, I look at this port, and I'm not sure anymore that we use this one for. Yeah. 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 Um, port is a string? Should be a number, by the way. I think. Yeah, it should be a number. Error, <laughs> error on the slide. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, so this was it. So what do we have? We have new locators API. Mm -hmm. Basically, the new preferred way to select elements on page. Mm -hmm. We have new assertions update, and we have basically max redirects for uh, API testing and. Mm -hmm. uh, program friendlier player assertions for to be enabled to be editable and to be visible. Mm -hmm. And we have miscellaneous improvements for player tests such as workers value and ignore snapshots and uh, better HTML report uh, serving configuration. Cool. So this is it. Can if I like make what a, we, a yeah. request for the next video? I, I, sure. I don't get to set the, the um, roadmap anymore, but I, I can I can make requests, right? Sure. I want to see um, uh, VS Code extension updates, Pirate VS Code extension. Okay. And I want to see something about uh, 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 C Sharp or Python or Java. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very valid. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll probably Although I, I, did, I did like these two updates. Good updates. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, last thing. Last. Uh, we have a bunch of social channels. Feel free to follow us on mm -hmm. uh, Slack and Twitter and uh, YouTube and give us a star on uh, GitHub if you like yeah, it. Like Kent did. Yeah, like Kent did. Um, thank you, Joel. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Hi.